Hello, everybody. So today we're going to continue with module 12 and our discussion of coordinate planes. And today we're going to add the concept of independent and dependent variables in tables and graphs. And so basically our question is, how can you identify the independent and dependent qualities from tables and graphs? All right, so let's look at the explore activity number one. Okay, we're on page 339 of the sixth grade GoMath middle school textbook. So identifying independent and dependent quantities from a table. So many real world situations involve two variable quantities. In one quant and one quantity depends on the other. The quantity that depends on the other quantity is called the dependent variable. And the quantity, quantity it depends on is called the independent variable. So for instance, a freight train moves at a constant speed. The distance y in miles that the train has traveled after x hours is shown in the table. So obviously if you have traveled no, no hours, you, you haven't traveled anywhere. At the end of one mile, the trains traveled 50 miles. At the end of two hours, the train traveled 100 miles. At the end of three hours, the train traveled 150 miles. And so you'll remember that we have been practicing in earlier grades about what patterns do we notice in, in tables, right? And so here, zero, it could be zero plus zero, right? It's probably not. It could be zero times zero. Again, it's probably not. If we have one, how do we go to 50? Well, that's plus 49 or times 50, right? And so that for it to be an independent and dependent, independent and dependent variable, it has to be a consistent pattern all the way through. So if I go two times 50, I get 100. If I do three times 50, I get 150. So this one is multiplying by 50, right? So what are the two quantities in this situation? Well, we have time and we have distance. So which one depends on the other? Well, we saw that as we increase our number of hours traveled, our distance increases. So distance depends on how many hours traveled. So what is independent? Time. I can change the number of hours that I travel. But the distance I go is dependent on how many hours we're traveling. And so how far does train travel each hour? So we saw that it increases. The distance is always 50 times greater than the number of hours. So 50 miles. And so we can then create an uh, equation to represent this relationship. So y, the distance in miles, is equal to 50, 50 hours, 50 miles traveled every hour times the number of hours. So if you tell me that the train travels eight hours, I can tell you the total distance because it's going to be 50 miles every hour. 50 times eight would be 400. So. So that's helpful for finding an equation using a table. All right, so let's look at page 340. So describe how the value of the independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable. And so we can easily say that the value of y, distance, is always 50 times greater than the value of x or hours. All 
what are the units of the independent variable and the dependent variable? Well, the independent variable is hours, right? And the dependent variable was distance or miles. And so what was the rate used in the equation? 50 miles per hour. And remember, per means every, right? So 50 miles every hour. All right, let's move on to activity two. So identifying independent and dependent variables from a graph. So in our previous activity, we saw how to represent or find the independent variable in a table. And here we're going to use a graph. So an art teacher has 20 pounds of clay but wants to buy more clay for her class. The amount of clay X purchased by the teacher and the amount of clay Y available for the class are shown on the graph. So here, let's say we have zero pounds purchased by the teacher. Well, that means she's going to have 20 pounds available for the class. That's what she currently has, right? So if she buys nothing else, she has 20 pounds. If she buys 10 pounds, how do I know that this is 10? because it's halfway between 0 and 20. So we're counting by 10s. Each of these marks is 10. So if she buys 10 pounds, she's going to have 30 pounds available. If she buys 20 pounds, she'll have 40 pounds available. If she buys 30 pounds, she's going to have 50. So <clears throat> if the teacher buys 10 more pounds, how much is available? 30 pounds. If the art class has a total of 50 pounds of clay available, how many pounds of clay did the teacher buy? Well, let's see. So 50 pounds available. She would have had to have purchased 30 pounds. All right, so how can we use the graph to show that? So we know that 30 pounds was purchased. How do we know that? Because if you look at the Y value for 50 pounds, that's 50 pounds right there, what is its corresponding X? And so as we go down, we see that it meets at 30 pounds. So let's look at page 341. So what are the two quantities in this situation? Well, we have the, the amount of clay available, right? And the amount of clay bought. Which was X, right? They represented X as the amount of clay that the teacher bought. And the Y... was the total amount of clay available to the class. And they're both in pounds. All right, so which of these two quantities depends on the other? 
the amount of play available is dependent upon how many pounds of clay were purchased. So as X increases the amount that she purchases, the amount of available clay goes up. So was the dependent the independent variable is clay bought. That can change by the amount of the, that the teacher buys. And the amount dependent is the clay available. Okay. So where's that relationship then? So Y, the amount available, is equal to 20 plus however many pounds she purchased. Now, why is it 20? Because remember that that's how many she already, that's how many pounds of clay she already has. So again, if she doesn't buy any, there's 20 pounds still available. If she buys 10 pounds, there's 30 pounds available and so on. So D, describe in words how the value of the independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable. Well, the value of Y is always 20 pounds more than the value of X. All right. So four, in this situation, the same units are used for the independent and dependent variables. How is this different from the situation involving the train? Well, in the train, they use distance and miles, right? So suppose, suppose the clay teacher, the clay the teacher buys is available only in 10 pound packages. How would the graph be different from the one shown on the facing page? So let's look here. So if they're only available in 10 pound bags, so we'd have 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, so on, right? So Well, so when I look at this, I see if she buys 10 pounds, she's going to have 30 pounds. If she buys 20 pounds, she'd have 40. If she buys 30 pounds, she'd have 50. If she buys 40 pounds, she'd have 60 available. If she buys 50, she'd have 70 pounds available. If she buys 60, she'd have 80 pounds available. So I'm not sure there would be any difference because we're still purchasing 10 pound bags 
So let's see, 10 more pounds of clay. And they're only available in 10 pound bags. But you could buy multiple pounds of tens, right? Okay, so there is going to be one slight difference though. They're only available in 10 pound packages. That means I can't have 15 pounds, right? So if they're not available in 15, that means this, this line here, this part here, this part. So all the spaces in between the dots or the ordered pairs would not be available. So the lines, or points, the points on the line would not be connected. Okay, so the total amount available on the graphs would not necessarily be different, but the line or points on the graph would not be connected. So again, I could buy zero, and she's going to have 20 pounds okay but she has can only buy 10 pounds so she can't buy something that's less than 10 and so there's no amount in between here so that means this line here that's connecting 0 and 10 is not a solution it's not accurate so it have to be just separate points okay and so we have these points but we would not join them. Okay. All right, number six. So what's the, what are the units of the independent variable and what are the units of the dependent variable? Well, they're both in pounds. All right, 342. Describe relationships between independent and dependent variables. Thinking about how one quantity depends on another helps you identify which quantity is the independent variable and which quantity is the dependent variable. In a graph, the independent variable is usually shown on the horizontal axis. So that's important. So the x, basically, if we were looking at a, at a coordinate plane, the x axis is the independent variable and the dependent variable dependent variable is along the vertical axis or the y-axis so the table below shows a relationship between two variables x and y describe a possible situation the table could represent describe the independent and dependent variables in the situation so here if x is zero we have 10. So that could be like an admission fee, right? And then maybe they add $1 for every hour that you rent something. So maybe you're going rafting, okay? And just a basic cost to, to get the raft is $10. If you want to rent the raft for an hour, it's going to cost you $11. If you rent the raft for two hours, it's going to cost you $12. If you rent it for three hours, it's going to cost you $13. So basically it's the cost to get the raft plus one. So this table, so the value of y is always 10 units greater than the value of x, right? 10 plus one, 11. 10 plus two, 12. 10 plus three, 13. So we could say plus 10. So the table could represent Gina's savings if each day she has $10 more than the number of days she's been saving. All right, that's true. The end of parent, Dependent variable X is the number of days she's been adding money to her savings. The dependent variable Y is her savings after X number of days. 
And in B, the graph shows a relationship between two variables. Describe a possible situation that the graph could represent. Describe the independent and dependent variables. So in this graph, we see that the value of y When the value of x is 1, y is 12. When the value of x is 2, the value of y is 24. When the value of x is 3, y is 36. So that's three times that's x times 12, right? And so it could be the number of eggs in a carton, right? Just because a carton that holds 12 eggs. So in this case, the independent variable would be the number of cartons, and the dependent variable would be y, the number of eggs. So what are some other possible situations that the table and the graph in the examples could represent? Okay, so Right, so the table is 0 and 10, right, 1, 11. So I'm going to say something like uh, Jeremy has 10 model cars in his collection. Each week, he will add one new model car. Okay. Right, and as far as the the graph goes, well, well I don't know. Let's see, one, twelve, two, twenty-four. So something times twelve. Um, I don't know. Let's say, um. The cost of a movie ticket is twelve dollars. Okay. And so that's just basically what the graph would re represent. If you buy one ticket, it's $12. If you buy two tickets, it would be $24. If you buy three tickets, it would be $36. So on. Number eight. Describe a real world, oh, describe real world values that the variables could represent. Describe the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. So here it looks like y is always 15 more than x. Okay, so the next one, if I put 4 here, it would be 19. If I put 5, it would be 20. So, I don't know, it's, it could be something like Susie, I don't know. Susie has $15 saved. Okay. And each day, she will, she will save one more dollar. Right? So she has $15. Each day she adds $1. So after two days, she has 17, 15 plus 2. So what's the independent variable? The independent variable will be the number of days she saves $1. The dependent variable. Is the total amount saved? All 
Right, number nine. 116, 232, 348, 464. Um, I guess we could say there are 16 cups. in every gallon. So in this case, the independent variable is number of total cups. I'm sorry, the number of total gallons, the number of gallons and the dependent variable is the number of total cups. Okay, Because here, we're multiplying by 16. So if these are gallons, these would be cups. If you have one gallon, you have 16 cups. If you have two gallons, you have 32 cups. If you have three gallons, you have 48 cups, and so on. Um, on number eight, I, I haven't written the relationship. It says, what is the relationship between the independent and dependent variables? So the value of y in the first one is always 15 more than the value of x. In number 9, the value of y is always 16 times greater than x. All right, number 10. So we see that these aren't joined. So I have 1, and this has to be 3. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And these are by 1s. So 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, 4, 12, and 5, 15. So that's our ordered pair. So basically, y is 3 times as great as x. Okay. So <clears throat> let's say something like tickets to a fair cost $3. Per person. Okay, so in this case, the independent variable is number of tickets bought and the dependent variable is the total cost. So what's the relationship again? Well, y is 3 times as great as the value of x. OK, so here, if we buy one ticket, it's going to cost you $3. You buy two tickets, it's going to cost you $6. If you buy three tickets, It'll cost you nine dollars. If you buy four tickets, it'll be twelve tickets, uh, twelve dollars. If you buy five tickets, it's going to be fifteen dollars, and so on. Okay. Now, why isn't this line joined? Well, because you can't buy one and a half tickets, right? So you can only buy the tickets in in amounts of one. Okay. So three forty four.
All right, so a boat rents paddle boats for a fee plus an additional cost per hour. The cost for renting different numbers of hours is shown in the table. So if you just want the paddle boat, that's going to cost you $10 no matter what. At the end of one hour, you have a cost of $11. So basically, they're adding a dollar to your basic fee. So what is the independent variable? Well, it's the number of hours or the time. So let's go, let's write independent time. So dependent, the total cost is dependent on how long you rent the paddle boat. Okay, number two. A car travels at a constant rate of 60 miles per hour. All right, so if we haven't traveled any hours, we haven't traveled anywhere. At the end of one hour, we've traveled 60 miles. At the end of two hours, we're just going to double the 60. At the end of three, three times six tens is 18 tens or 180. So what's the independent variable? Well, time is, right? Dependent is the distance. This is just like the train question, right? All right, C, describe how the value of the independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable. The dependent variable is always 60 times greater than the value of x. Or we could say that the distance is always 60 times greater than the value of the time. All right, three. Describe in words how the value of an independent variable is related to the value of the dependent variable. And we have to use the graph. So let's see here, we have zero, zero. One, and it's halfway between 10 and zero, so five. At two, we're at 10. At three, we're at 15. And at four, we're at 20. So what pattern do you notice here? Well, the Y is always five times the value of X. Remember, the dependent variable is along the vertical axis. So the dependent variable y is always five times the independent variable. x. Okay. So wherever the value of x is, multiply it by five. And four, describe a real world situation that the graph could represent. Then describe the possible values for each variable. Okay, let's see, the total cost y And so <clears throat> the independent variable, number of pizzas bought, okay. 
any positive whole number. And the dependent variable the cost of the pizzas will be whole number increments of 5. Whole number increments, sorry, of 5. All right, number five, how can you identify the dependent and independent variables in a real world situation modeled by a graph? Well, the Y is the dependent variable. The vertical axis is along the Y axis. The independent variable is along the X axis. on a graph, independent variables along the x, and the dependent variable variables along the vertical axis or the y-axis. Number six. So the graph shows the relationship between the hours of soccer team practice after the season started and their total practice time for the year. All right, so they, if you had zero practice time during the season, they would have practiced six hours for the whole year. So that means they practice six hours before the season, right? All right, and if they practice one hour in season, they would have seven hours. And they can practice in fractions of hours too because the line is joint or I mean the points are joint so how many hours did the soccer team practice before the season began six hours right we know that because zero and six relates to that so what are the two quantities in this situation practice time during the season In hours and the total practice time for the year in hours. What are the dependent and independent variables? Well, again, the only way that the total amount of practice is going to increase from six is if they increase their number of hours practiced during the season. So the independent variable, in other words, the variable that can change is practice time during season. Which makes the dependent variable The total practice time. Okay, the other way we know that is because the practice time during the season is along the horizontal or the x axis, and that's the independent variable. The total practice time for the year is along the vertical axis or the y axis. So D, describe the possible values for each variable. Well, it can't be negative time, right? So you have to have non-negative numbers.
for x-axis and non-negative numbers greater than 6 for the dependent variable. Analyze, uh, how is the value of the independent variable related to the value of the dependent? Well, whatever you tell me x is, it's going to be 6, the y value is going to be 6 more than that. Right, and describe the relationship between the quantities in words. So pro total practice time for the year. Is six more hours than the number of hours practiced during the season. Okay. So, it's number seven. Teresa is buying glitter market, markets, no, markers, to put in gift bags. The table shows the relationship between the number of gift bags and the number of glitter markers she buys. So if she doesn't buy any gift bags, she has no markers. If she buys one gift bag, she has five markers. If she buys two gift bags, ten. All right, so this is always five times five times x. What's the dependent variable is the number of markers. The independent variable is the number of gift bags. Describe the relationship between the quantities and words. So the number of glitter markers is dependent on the number of gift bags. All right, 346. All right, so we have a decreasing trend here, right? So as the number of months increase, the amount that Thai owes goes down. All right, so describe the relationship between the number of months and the amount Thai owes. Identify an independent and dependent variable and explain your thinking. All right, so the amount Thai owes is decreasing, right? So the amount he owes, let's see, $500. He owes $500. That's where it starts at zero months he owes five hundred dollars so the amount i owes five hundred dollars decreases by it looks like it's going down by increments of 50 right yes decreases by fifty dollars each month so the independent variable
is number of months and dependent is the amount Tai owes. Okay. So the less months that have passed, the more money he owes. The more months that have gone by, the less money he owes. How long will it take Tai to pay back his parents? Well, so we start here at 500. We need the amount to get to zero. Where does it get to zero? At month 10. All right, number 11, uh, number nine, I mean. A discount store has a special, eight cans of juice for a dollar. A shopper decides that since the number of cans purchased is eight times the number of dollars spent, the cost is the, is the independent variable and the number of cans is the independent variable, is the dependent variable. Do you agree? No. The total cost is related to the number of cans you buy. All right, and number 10, provide an example of a real world relationship where there is no clear independent or, in, or dependent variable. Hmm. All right, well, let's say there's two teams in the league. And let's say one of those teams practices more hours than the other team. The team that practices more wins more games. Well, the reason I think that that's not a clear independent and dependent variable is what if the other teams in the league just weren't as good? It's possible, right? Or maybe the team that practices more hours was already a better team or had better athletes. So I can't necessarily say for sure that just because they practice more, that made them win more games. All right, so that's it for lesson 12.2, independent and dependent variables. So we'll continue with module 12 in our next discussion. And until then, I'll see you soon.